ResaCalc is a web-based application for individual component design which provides engineers with an easy-to-use interface that allows for full control over inputs such as geometry and loading, in addition to graphical and numerical results including robust detail reports. So when you first open up ResaCalc, you'll open it up in an internet web browser and you'll enter in your login credentials similar to how you log into the customer portal. Here on the first page, you'll see there's your projects listed. So you have your own personal projects or you can look at your recent projects. And to create a new component, I'm going to click New. And I'm going to actually create a new project name. And I'm just going to type that in here. And then down below, you can see where we have the components menu. Here in the components menu is all the components available in ResaCalc that you can choose from. And so for our example, we're just going to look at a beam under the building structure elements. Now in the component design windows, you can see that we have the add components menu over here. So here you can add an additional component to this project. And if you have multiple components, you can see it down below under the all category. Here in the middle is our graphical window that you'll see your component modeled. Next, we're going to go to settings. In the settings is where we list our codes. And here in the codes, you will define your codes for every different material type that we have available. If you just select the drop down menu example for hot roll steel, you'll see the different codes available. Next, in the concrete tab, you will see the settings that you can set for your concrete component designs. And the next would be our composite. The next tab, which is our units, are the units that you can set for your design. So here you can set the different custom units that you want to use for your design component, or you can choose to default to imperial or metric. Clicking close, we go back to our component model view. So for this model example, we're going to create a concrete reinforced beam. So here we're going to start in our properties toolbar, which is here on the right hand side with the four different tab options. So under the general properties to create the different beam material types, we're going to choose the material type drop down and choose concrete for our example. Below the concrete, you see now there's an option to choose the concrete strength and I'm going to leave that as 4000. Down below, now we're going to choose the shape type. And the shape type will be the dimensions of our beam that we're looking for. So we're just going to leave it as 18 by 12. If you choose the little I function, it will give you additional information on the material properties that the program has calculated based on your inputs. Down below, you have options to choose explicit or optimized design. Optimized design will allow the program to automatically optimize the design, including the reinforcement for this example with the concrete beam. For this concrete beam, below, you can set additional options for the reinforcement. So if I click on the flexural reinforcement here, I'm going to edit it. And now you can see that in the graphic window has changed to start displaying the reinforcement and auto updating it to whatever information we enter here. Here on the top, you can also click the drop down to change the different show options. And so you have these same options to edit for the shear reinforcement as well. So next I'm going to go to the span tab to enter the span information for this beam. For the left and right spans, you have options for your boundary conditions to be pinned, roller, free, etc. And then you also enter in your span length, which was the 10 feet. If we want to add an additional span, we'll choose to add a span and it'll add the span and then you start to edit this information as well. So I'm going to just create a 2x5 cantilever. 
So now here at the additional span, I can edit the boundary condition at the right support. So if I wanted to set this to a fixed end condition, I could do that, or I can edit this to be a cantilever, so I'm going to choose a free end. Now in the design portion, this is where I can start to enter in the deflection ratios that I will be looking at. Next in loads, we're going to add our loads to be assigned to this beam. Down here below in the load combinations, you can see that the program is auto-generating load combinations. Clicking the little gear here, which is for the settings, you can then define additional load combinations based on the region, the code, and the year. You can also toggle these switches for strength load combinations versus ASD, self-weight, or you can choose to show them all, which they are already selected as you see here. I'm going to leave the combinations I have and click close. And now let's add in some point loads. So I'm going to add in a point load by selecting the plus sign. Here in the category we can choose the load type, so a live load for my example. And then I'm going to enter in the magnitude. And then here I can enter the position of the load. And then this will be based on feet or you could do as a percentage if you prefer that. Now if I add a distributed load, I'll use the same similar plus sign and then I'll choose the load category, choose the direction of the load, and then I'm going to also enter in the magnitude of the distributed load as well. For distributed loads, you can actually enter in variable values and that will create a tapered load or you enter in the same value to keep a uniform load. So here I'm going to show you the capabilities of the tapered distributed load. And again, you would place the distributed load as specified by feet or the percentage length of the member. So here if I wanted to have it just 50% over the full length of the member, I could go from 50% to 100% and click close. Now to solve and run the solution, I will select the solve at the bottom and here you can see now the program has solved this component and has generated a detail report over here. And then also in the graphical view, it has generated the results as well. So you can see these graphically in the window. So above here, you can see the governing load combinations. If you click the view drop down also, again, you can choose none or you can start to scroll down to see all the deflection load combinations. Here on the right hand side are graphical toolbars where you can start to show the shear diagrams, moment diagrams, and deflections. You can also see the reactions graphically as well. Back here on the detail report on the right hand side, you can see the tabs where you can either scroll down here on the right hand side to see the property, the loads, the diagrams that we just looked at for shear and moment. You can also use these tabs on the left to toggle to the specific section you wish to look at. So if I look at the load combinations, this tab will take me directly to the same as the diagrams that we were just looking at. And you can see these match the same diagrams that we saw in our graphical view. You can also see the reactions that are being supported. The most important feature here for a lot of engineers is the calculations. Here in the calculations portion of the detail report, you can start to see the pass fail results in, in the Udini checks. You can also choose the drop down arrows to expand these pass fail and Udini checks. In the drop downs, they'll have all the expanded equations and references with the values that the program has been using in the background to calculate these results. So here we can see an example of the hook length. We can also see an example of the rebar detailing. So the rebar detailing is going to show us exactly what rebar reinforcement the program has optimized by putting into our beam, our concrete beam component. You can also start to see diagrams of the rebar detailing and also sections of the rebar detailing below as well. The next feature too in the detail report is the messages. So the messages will report any errors that you would see in the, in the model that either need to be addressed or prevented the model from 
reporting certain calculation. You can now go on to actually print this detail report. If you choose the download button here, it'll populate a window. And in this window, it'll list all of your components that you have in your project file. And then also, you can include the different sections of the detail report. So if I open up my calculations, it even has subcategories where if I don't want to include certain sections of the calculations report, I can choose to select or deselect those. And now it's going to quickly start generating the PDF detailed report. And you can see down here, the program has already downloaded the detail report, and you can see it here in the downloads toolbar here. Back in our graphical window, you can also choose to zoom in and zoom out by clicking the expanded feature over here on the top left. That will unlock the zoom in and zoom out feature of your graphical view. Another added bonus and feature is up here in the top right. If you choose this question mark, you're essentially looking for help tools. In these help tools, you have overviews, you have the release notes, you have an extension to our help library, but also you have recess support. And clicking this recess support will send your model directly to our support technicians to help you with your model. Another added bonus feature is back here in our detail report. If you click this expand tool, you can actually expand to see your detail report in a larger view without having to download it like we previously did before. And so now this will take up the whole web page so that you can look at it within the RisaCalc portion. So let's say I wanted to change a property in my model. So if I go to my properties tab and I decide to change my concrete material strength, I can choose that here and then quickly I'll just go down here and then resolve the model. And so you can see now here the detail report has updated and resolved based on those property changes. For more information about RISA Calc, including available components and pricing, please visit RISA.com.